huddle with corporate cars delivering affordable luxury European vehicles nationwide. News Talk ZB 24 to 6, the huddle this evening from Whale Oil, Cameron Slater and Herald columnist Jock Anderson. Good evening to you both. Good evening, Susan. So, uh, it's yeah, let's talk about this Labour Party leadership and Jock. Uh, Grisinda, I see, is what, that's what the social <laughs> media is calling Grant and Jacinda, the, uh, the only, I guess, leader who has declared who he would be his preferred running mate. Uh, if, do you think they've got what it takes? <gasps> Well, they obviously do, um, uh, bearing in mind um, some of the constituents they're clearly um, hoping to attract. Um, when I saw some of the photographs, I just wondered if they'd sort of entered into some kind of a civil union or something. Um, which it's like new was... idea type stuff, wasn't it? Josh? It was a bit, yes. yes. And, yeah, the wedding um, of the year. Maybe um, that's maybe the we gay should... man and the barren woman. They're trying, hey, to, hey, hey. they're trying to encourage us to embrace them. Would you, would you go along with that? Um, I'm not going to be. Embr- I'm not going to be embracing them you're at not. all. John. Well, well, no, no, no. You're not. But we're talking about four contenders here. I think um, probably the three men would be, be the front runners at some point. And you've got some pretty heavyweight backing. Cam, haven't they? You've seen um, Michael Cullen, Sir Michael Cullen, uh, lending his support to Grant Robertson. David Parker is being is being backed by former Labour Party President Mike oh. Williams. And then, of course, Andrew Little's got the EPMU behind him. So it's well, anybody's I, race there. I just wonder whether Michael Cullen isn't actually transgressing the State-Owned Enterprises Act by being a director of a state-owned enterprise and involving himself in party politics. It, it seems a little bit strange that he'd do that. Mike Williams is neither here nor there. Um, probably the greatest ever fundraiser the Labour Party has ever had, and if he's backing someone, then you can be assured that they're going to have no problems with fundraising. Uh, and no surprises that the EPMU has backed their former boss, Andrew Little. What do you think, Jock? Well, one of the things I find quite interesting about this, and here we've had we've had an election, um, and all the grim faces have come and gone. We've had even grimmer faces um, with the collapse of the of the Labour Party. And now we've actually got a couple of people um, who are actually grinning and smiling. I mean, some people might think, you know, thank goodness for that. that. People can still laugh about something. They're either laughing at themselves or someone's cracked a joke in the audience. They are surrounded by people with funny coloured hair, but I mean, that might be part of the, the, the growing up phase. Um, yeah, it's, it's still going to be an, an interesting race, I think. And as Cam says, they've all got their, their backers. Um, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they're still going to be whoever leads this party. They're still going to be leading a losing party um, that is simply not going to um, resurrect itself by saying, "Well, you know, we're going to be loyal to Labour values," amongst a few other bits. So, and what pieces. are those values these days? I mean, the, the Labour Party, this, the name of it, in, invokes the wo- Labour and work and those sorts of things. But Labour, it seems today. Is the, is the party for the indigent, uh, the criminal classes, and, and, and bludgers. I mean, that's basically where their policies all lie. There's nothing there about working New Zealand well, or they... New Zealand or anything like that. Well, and on, none of sure. these contenders even appeal to any of those people. But look, a lot of Labour Party supporters, I'm quite sure, um, work in the public service. And, um, you know, that's, that's where they get a lot of their support from. They also came at the weekend on Q and A. We had the debate with the with the four Labour leader Labour leader hopefuls there, and they were a lot of them talking about reconnecting with working New Zealanders. To your point, which is where they need to get their support back, isn't it? Well, a- a- absolutely. But the problem is, is that the <coughs> the activists who hold sway with forty percent of the vote for the leadership think that New Zealanders have yet again been hoodwinked by that nasty Mr John Key who's just waiting to sell everything down the river to the Americans. And uh, and in fact, if David Cunliffe and his caucus had behaved and gone the way that they thought, which was further to the left, hard, harder to the left, that they would have just grabbed the Treasury benches. And they ignore the fact that more than 65% of the electorate voted for centre-right parties. This is the massive disconnect between the the uh, activist base and the reality of life in West Auckland or South Auckland in those former Labour-supporting areas. If the Labour Party, as, as we know it now, um, Susan, has to say that it's going to be committed to workers, if it has to actually say that, then it is clearly lost <laughs> any 
commitment at all and any appreciation of what workers, who workers are. Well, I think well, I think there was an acknowledgement. I think there's been a real acknowledgement of that. I mean, you've got the big review, you've got the, the leadership. I mean, they know that, that they are at historic lows. But, but have doing, a look you at got, that you got Brian, Gould, Brian Gould and Margaret Wilson doing a review. Goodness me, what's going to come out of well, that? And I have to echo that too, Jock. Because Brian Gould, the guy who stood for the leadership of the Labour Party in the UK and was rinsed comprehensively is now the man that's reviewing the state of the Labour Party in New Zealand. I mean, goodness me. And he fled back to Hamilton, didn't he? Well, with his tail between his <laughs> legs and, 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 and is a somewhat sad figure uh, who, who writes lonely sort of columns in the New Zealand Herald that no one reads. Well, let's not talk about lonely columns, Cam. Um, oh, it does, though, doesn't it, Cam, it matter what questions they ask? Isn't that what it's about? They need to be examining the right things and then they might come out with some of the right answers, perhaps. I mean, let's not write it off before they've done it. Well, unfortunately, I think that the best people in Labour uh, pack their tent and, uh, and their sleeping bags and all their camping utensils and, and decamped from the party quite some time ago. There's a lot of capable people out there on the periphery who have yeah. now got themselves cushy jobs in PR or, or uh, are working in the corporate sector that have just um, washed their hands of the Labour Party because it became captured by these single interest groups. They pushed... Uh, ridiculous policies that re rewarded uh, the beneficiary classes uh, over the top of the working people who are actually funding those benefits. They've really lost their way, and I just don't think that there's anybody in that party that's going to say the blunt and hurtful things that need to be said to drag them back into reality. And don't forget um, Mr Key's um, masterful stroke in, um, in neutralising um, Shane Jones. Well, that, that's right. He changed uh, sunning himself, um, you know, uh, in around the Pacific as, he, as he's dealing with fishing issues. And, of course, there was a hit job put on him on the weekend about some sort of uh, palaver over, over where he's staying, you know. I mean, it was a nothing story, but it was obviously that they're still on the left afraid of the Jones factor. Right? I think they should be more worried about what Shane Jones is going to do closer to the next election when he yeah. may actually pop up on the list of New Zealand first. Well, yes, that, that story's been going around for a while, hasn't it? We'll take a quick break there, Jock Anderson and Cameron Slater. Back with more from the huddle in just a moment. It's 17 to 6. It's Susan Wood in for Larry Williams on Larry Williams Drive with ANZ, providing business banking expertise near you on News Talk ZB. It is 14 to 6 on the huddle this evening. Cameron Slater and Jock Anderson. I've just got an email and it's quite interesting actually here from Mike Baker who's something of a regular correspondent. Where is the internet mana party these days? Why have we not heard from Pam Corkery? Where is Lila Hare? Please discuss. All I can, all I know is a Facebook post I saw from Pam Corkery about a birthday and eating too much sugar. Cam, you got any more clues? I uh, don't really care. They've, uh, they've, their bubble has burst. Uh, they had nothing to say in the election. They've got nothing to say now. Uh, best they just scuttle off into the dark corners from where they came from. Jock? Ditto to that. <laughs> All right. Um, interesting in Australia, the ban the burqa. It was, seems it was some sort of historical campaign, Jock, that started, I think it was a talkback radio call, and then suddenly they're banning the burqa or sending them off behind the glass screens, and now they've had to back down. Well, I mean, this is peculiar, I guess. I mean, fortunately we don't, fortunately we don't live in Australia, so we're not subject to the weird things they do there, but uh, there is something to be said for um, people being able to see who is actually um, hidden behind various items of clothing. Now, whether these are items of clothing worn for religious or cultural or, or fashion uh, reasons is beside the point as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I do think that if someone certainly is going into the, um, into the House of Parliament, um, that those in charge of security um, should at least um, be able to see who they are in case um, they might have um, mischief on their minds. I, I'm confused by all of this because we live in... Well, we, we do live in a tolerant society, largely. We've encouraged people to come here to leave hegemonic societies where males practice dominance over females, subjugate them with things like the burqa and those sorts of things. Anyone who says that it's free choice and free will is deluding themselves. Yet they come to this country and to Australia and they want to uphold the practices that are so anathema to any New Zealander or Australian. It beggars belief they actually want to live here. 
And I think that we need to actually get start getting smart and sensible, particularly around Islamic immigration, where we need to start saying, if you want to live in, these, in this country, then you need to follow our laws. And our laws don't include Sharia law, and it certainly doesn't include the subjugation of women. And, and I find it absolutely astonishing that the feminist groups that are out there that become outraged over skinny models at glassons and things like that aren't in the streets uh, calling for the removal of the burqa to free women from subjugation. I mean, that would be a far more effective campaign than complaining about skinny rib-showing sh- models at Glasson. Final topic of the night, and I'll start with you, Jock, on this one, the swearing in of MPs. We saw that happen today. I think you can swear your allegiance to God and you can swear your allegiance to the Queen, but not the Treaty of Waitangi. Marama Fox not happy about that in the Māori Party. Trying to push for that to happen. Well, well look, if this person doesn't want to take the proper oath of allegiance, why on earth do they um, stand for Parliament? You know, um, the treaty because always, they represent a different view. That's why people, they stand people, for Parliament. People represent different views. Yeah. But, I mean, in Parliament, if you're going to become an MP and you're going to get sworn in the, in the, in the proper way, whether or not you agree with the monarchy or the Queen or whatever, that, that is the rule. That's what you have to do. It's all very well saying, oh, well, I don't but She can do change this. the rule, surely. She can complain. She's, she's entitled to complain. Just, if you don't like a rule, you can at least try to get it changed, can't you? Well, yeah. you can make a bit of a noise yeah. about it, but, you know, you know, why don't she get, doesn't she go and live in a republic? We will... I mean, um, look, we, we, we know what Kevin Haig is. Kevin Haig, he's, right. he's got no loyalty, no allegiance. Got to go, Jock. Got to go, Jock. Thank you for that, Jock Anderson and Cameron Slater. There's your huddle. It's 10 to 6.